Hi there, I thought you might find this interesting if you are thinking about learning to play the Melodeon. Uh, this is not meant to be a tutorial in, in any way, shape or form. Just really a, a video blog of me learning to play this instrument. Um, I've owned this particular instrument for about a week and a couple of days now. It's my first ever Melodeon. Although I should say I'm a professional musician, I've taught and played the guitar all my working life. Uh, this is my first dip into the world of squeeze boxes. So, I hope you find this interesting. Um, I first got into this uh, a few weeks ago. My wife and I went to a barn dance and there was a guy playing a piano accordion. And I'd always kind of sneakily wanted one. So, uh, my wife and I, we went down to a local junk shop, picked up this piano accordion, which was quite nice looking, but uh, very, very dirty and bashed around. And when we got it home, we found that it got lots of faults. So we took it to Martin White, who's our local uh, uh, squeeze box expert, uh, particularly Melodians and concertinas, also a really good player, nice guy. And I got talking to him and uh, went round to his house and I played a couple of his Melodians very, very badly indeed and kind of got hooked. So anyway, he sold me this. It's a Hona Erica DG. That means to say that it plays in two keys particularly. Um, this row of buttons gives you... Uh, the key of D, this row of buttons gives you the key of G. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> this is uh, a Hona, Hona, sorry, this is a Hona uh, Erica, and it's uh, about 1990, we think, in the, from the 90s, although these go back uh, a long while. I'm no expert, so if I say the wrong things, I'm sure there'll be loads of Melodian people out there that will uh, put me right. Talking of which, there is an excellent website called um, Melodian.net. Check that out uh, and you'll find loads of really lovely, helpful people on there. It's run by a guy called Theo Gibb, who you know really knows his stuff, obviously. And you can find the answer to just about any question on there. I had lots of questions and uh, people were very patient with me, answering me very quickly and very politely. So check that out if you are at all interested. So this is my first entry in, in this blog, in this video blog. And just want to tell you a little bit about the Melodian, if you don't know. Obviously it's a squeeze box. Uh, it's got bellows and they're locked into place by these straps top and bottom which I'm going to release. And there's a button here on the side. If you push it down, some, some of these instruments you push the button in. This one you push down and that lets air into the bellows. And you can open and shut them really easily. Uh, uh, you shouldn't try and open and shut bellows, by the way unless you're playing something or you're pressing that button, otherwise you will damage the reeds. And as I understand it, essentially inside it's like a, a load of harmonicas, but instead of you blowing with your mouth, the bellows do the blowing for you. <coughs> now a piano accordion, you've probably seen one of those, it's uh, got bellows, but instead of these buttons it's got keys. Um, a piano accordion, a little bit more straightforward to play in that you've got bass on this side, bass buttons and chords on this side, and keys on this side, and it doesn't matter which way the bellows are travelling, you get the same note. Not so with a Melodian. If I play a scale of G, which is the first thing I learnt, you'll see what happens. You get a different note on the in and the out, you see? That's a scale of G, which you can play on the inside row, and do the same thing on the outside row, and that will give you a scale of D. Um, and there will be Melodian experts out there screaming at this video, going, God, what a terrible technique, and they're probably right, but bear in mind I've only been playing a week. Um, the left hand, although I'm not using the bass buttons and chords at the moment, probably won't be in this video, is kind of trapped behind this strap, which I'm lucky enough to have a Velcro strap so I can adjust that. And at the moment I'm just using this hand to, to push the bellows in and out. Obviously if you don't push the bellows at all, well, you do get a little bit of a note, but not much. Um, the right hand, um, you've got two choices. I've seen some players with their thumb right behind the keyboard and some with a thumb on the outside. And I've been told to put my thumb on the outside, that's what I tend to do. Um, 
I'm 58 at the time of doing this video, uh, so I've had a few uh, issues with aches and pains. Um, I did post this on Melodium.net. Hips are a bit of a problem. Might be because I'm sitting in a swivel chair. Might be a bit of a problem. Um, and the first couple of days I had it, I made the mistake of practicing for too long. Absolutely wore myself out. Got a terrible stiff neck. I uh, would recommend if you are starting to learn to play this, do it in short, sharp stabs, sort of 10, 15 minutes, have a cup of coffee, come back. Otherwise you will get very tired and get lots of aches and pains. Um, what else can I tell you? Obviously these are the um, the bass notes, the grunters, as George Garside calls them. Talking to George, I have his tutor book here that I bought on eBay. And uh, it's really good, excellent book. And it's got lots of, sort of tunes that I remember from my childhood. And that's quite handy so I can remember, I actually know most of them. There's a few I don't know, so I've struggled a bit more with those. And it's written out in uh, dots, you know, proper musical notes. And this funny uh, Melodian language as well, which is like numbers for the buttons and little arrows to show you the direction of the bellows. But it's very, very good. And uh, I've been uh, having a lot of fun with this. And my wife, who's learning to play the piano accordion, she's been playing these tunes as well. So um, I'm going to give you, oh dear, what can the matter be? Um, and... You'll probably know this and be groaning, saying what a terrible tune, but it's quite good fun to play. And I'm not going to use my left hand, I'm simply going to play uh, the right hand. Oh, sorry, I was talking about the bass buttons, wasn't I? Before I get to that, let's just do these bass buttons. So you've got... In, same as the right hand, most of the time, you've got a different, different note on the in and the out. And some buttons play notes, and some play chords. We'll get to that a little bit later. Um, I have found, I'll sort of tell you straight away, the right hand's not too hard, although you'll, I probably will make some mistakes. And the left hand's not too hard, it's putting the two together is a bit of a nightmare because of all the inning and outing and the different notes. But uh, we'll get to that maybe in a later video. Anyway, this is, um, this is Oh Dear What Can The Matter Be. This is the first tune I learned, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, it starts on the note A, which is this one here. Obviously with the piano accordion, I was a little bit more familiar with this side because I do play the piano, so I knew my way around. But obviously, when you're confronted with all these buttons, they're sort of fairly meaningless until you know what they all do. But basically, um, with the bellows pushing in, this is all notes. Um, you've got first, uh, third, fifth, octave, third, fifth, octave, and so on. That's D, and pushing in on this side, starting with the third button. The third button gives you the root note, by the way, I should have said that. So that third button there is a D, and these, these are all... So you imagine you've got D, F sharp, A, D, F sharp, A. So it's first, it's all the notes of the major chord. Likewise here, the third button is G. So you've got G, you've got the first, third, fifth, octave, third, fifth, octave. So you've got G, B, D, G, B, D. And you are supposed to use all four fingers, but you don't use your thumb to play the notes. Um, there probably are some Melodian players out there that use their thumb. I have sort of seen that on some of the continental uh, instruments. I don't think anybody tends to play with their thumb, but if I'm wrong, please do feel free to correct me. So this is Oh Dear What Can The Matter Be? And it starts on A, um, which is the fifth button, pushing in. I've got through that in one take and again I'm probably wrong there because I'm obviously playing I'm playing some of the notes of the bellows so, I mean probably and George himself in the tune book says do do try and play the note the, the tune uh, doing a separate press for each note like this I think you should probably practice both of those styles and they're both probably 
uh, fairly valid. But that's a really good tune to start with. It only uses the D row and it only uses uh, those notes that are all accessible with those four fingers. So that's a pretty good one uh, to go in with. And at the bottom of the page, George says, congratulations, you've got a tune out of the thing, which I really like. It's a very witty book, and I can really recommend it to you if you're looking for a tutor book. And you hate those terrible old-fashioned books. Uh, this is quite a witty, uh, witty book, but it's got lots of good tunes. This next tune is called The Blade and Races, which is a bit of a, a Geordie classic, so I'm told. I think it's a, a tune that Newcastle United fans sing. Uh, this is played on the G row and it's got a nice sort of rumpty tumpty sort of feel to it, so it goes like this. Changeovers there as I'm pulling the bellows in and out, I'm getting uh, sort of the the note, the wrong note kind of leaking through as I'm, I'm changing, which is obviously not good playing, and that's obviously because I'm probably going too fast. I probably should play it a little bit slower than that, but I'm kind of racing through it in a nervous kind of way because the video's on. Um, but you know, you get the idea. That's a really nice one to play. Nice, uh, as I say, nice rumpty tumpty sort of feel to it uh, in six eight timing. So you've had a tune in D. The tune in G, uh, what else can I give you? Uh, the keel row, this is a tune I used to sing at, at, at school. And again, I think this is, lots of these I thought were Scottish, but I think again, this is a Newcastle tune, but again, I could be wrong. Um, and this one's on the G, uh, the G row, not the keel row. And it's got a, um, this kind of feel to it. Right. Mistake straight away because I didn't have my fingers set out properly. This one uses two positions. First of all, you start off here with the fingers on buttons two, three, four, and five. And then you move up to four, five, six, and seven. So let's see if I can get that right. Right. You can hear that I wasn't sort of dwelling on some of those notes long enough. Uh, again, po possibly because I'm playing too fast. But you could hear the tune, and I did get through it just about. A uh, bit of a scrape. Please bear in mind, I've only been playing a week, so don't be too too hard on me. Um, so yeah, so that's the keel row. Um, then I went into a tune where I changed rows. This is called the Black Velvet Band. I think this is an Irish song. And this one, I'm going to use notes on the G row and some on the D row as well. Yeah, there's a there's a D there and there's a D there, both on the push. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to play the D on this row in this tune because I play the E on the pull on that note, and there isn't an E in the G row. So if that didn't make sense, I totally understand. But hopefully, when I play it, it will make a bit of sense. So. So it starts on this D, which is on the push on button 5 on the G row. That's obviously a waltz, 3-4 time, and uses two rows. Um, a couple of other tunes I've been playing, not particularly good at them. Uh, one I'm um, doing is called the Winster Gallop, which, as I understand it, is a bit of a, a, a classic melodian tune. And this is the tune, just the right hand first of all, then I shall attempt to put some left hand in, and this really is ambitious. Two, three, four.
that kind of idea. One thing I should say is that this instrument is a pretty physical instrument. I mean, I've been playing for about half an hour this morning, and I'm, you know, pretty hot, um, pretty kind of worn out, I have to say already. So to say, you do want to do it in uh, in short stabs. Don't go on for too long because you will wear yourself out very, very quickly. I mean, I play the guitar and the banjo. Believe me, uh, they're a walk in the park compared to this physically. There's a lot of pulling and pushing, and you know, you need, do need a bit of strength. Um, Martin, who sold me this and who is a real expert on the melodeon, said, you know, you do have to give it a bit of welly. You do need to get into it physically. I'm, I'm a bit, I'm holding back a bit at the moment. And one thing I should say about practicing is think of your neighbours because these are a lot louder than you think they are and they really carry through. So it's not something you want if you're semi detached, you don't want to be playing this uh, after nine o'clock at night or before nine in the morning. So you will really upset your neighbours. A lot of it's in the bellows. If you don't push the bellows uh, too hard or pull too hard, you can cut the volume down. This this keyboard is not not touch sensitive in any way, uh, or not really, I don't think. So it's all the volume is all to do with the, the bellows. Right for the final part of this video, I'm going to try and put some bass into that first bit, and I'm going to get this kind of. So you've got what you've got. You've got G root note and G um, major chord on the push on these two buttons, and on the pull you've got D. Now, luckily, when you come for the C, it's the same both ways. So a three chord trick, if you know your your sort of folk songs, is uh, in the key of G, is G C and D. So you're doing G. G, 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 D, D, G, G, C, C, G, sorry, G, G, D, D, G. But obviously the problem comes when you, you're playing a tune and you need to move your bellows. So let's just see if I can do this. kind of got the idea I think and it is a bit tricky because you, you, you're getting pulled every which way when you do that and all the stuff I play in this video I play too fast for a beginner you know but I'm just not wishing to bore you to death while I plough through it at ridiculously slow speed but I definitely recommend slowing right down. So that's the end of my first uh, learning to play the Melodian blog and again apologies to all you Melodian experts you're probably cringing horribly as you're watching this but hopefully I'll get better and when I think I've got something more to show you I'll do my, the blog number two. See you soon.